it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. Today I'm going to be putting together pebbles, in case you didn't recognize this figure. Um, we're doing off the mat. I've done pebbles before, but the one I recorded before did not have a glitter background. So this one's going to be a little bit different. Um, not so different because we've done it with jasmine and snow white and stuff before. But it does require using different, um, different glues because normally I love to just use my Tombow adhesive glue and I just um, put it down because it doesn't warp the materials at all. But when you're doing it onto glitter and to make sure it stays, I'm using different glue. So I am using my glue gun today which is mostly okay because it's glitter cardstock on top of glitter cardstock so it's already kind of thick but we do have the skin portion so that's where this comes in so this is beacon three in one um i actually someone recommended this to me and i absolutely love it i was using other glues that i thought i loved but this one is awesome um all right so the first thing is on all my off the mat projects is I like to do the black background because then everything else sits on top of it. So <clears throat> it's already laid out. We're going to be taping from behind because if you think about it, even though all the colors that are going to sit on top, some areas are still going to show, right? Not everything, not the whole black background isn't 100% covered. So the small percentage that is still left uncovered, we don't want any tape to show because even though scotch tape is clear against this black background, you can still see it. Although, <laughs> I'm not making a very good case for myself right now, but trust me, you can see it in person. So, what you want to do is you want to flip this over. And we're going to tape from behind. And, oh, there's marks on that. Um, when you're taping from behind, I always like to do two pieces at one time because we're trying every part of this process is trying to conceal our seams. We're making something big that shouldn't be able to be big, right? Because we're cutting it up into puzzle pieces and we're putting it all back together. So our main goal really is to make it look like uh, we have gigantic paper and we were able to do it all together, right? And not that we had to break it up into pieces. So what's important is you, when you do the two pieces together, one piece you're gonna hold up and you're gonna push it against the other piece. And then you, um, as you put it down, you wanna put your thumb down to hold it kind of tight right there, and then tape. And, you know, you wanna tape it down, obviously, a lot, because um, where there's a little bit of bend or movement, that's when the seams catch the light, natural light, and you're gonna see your seams. So you're going to want, right now it's okay, we wanna just tape it together. Once it's all together, we wanna to go back and look at where are all the edges and make sure that we tape the edges. All right, and especially the edges because that's the one place we know isn't gonna be covered by some other piece. So okay, let's do this one. Push the two together. So we've got that. The hair, you know how um, in design space, when I'm doing the design space tutorial, I like for this portion to be big pieces, right? Like these two big, these two pieces were big. This one right here, they're all sizable. Right here with her hair, this is a little bit on the small side, but it's still doable, right? And sometimes the way the character is, you don't have a choice. There's nothing more that you can do. So it is what it is. Um, what I don't like is when the pieces are like, if it's this little tip right here hanging off by itself, that you definitely want to avoid. Okay, so now all my individual pieces are taped together. Let's put the, the pairs together. So with this one, I'm going to lift it up, push it really close, and see, I, I didn't line this up that well because when you're putting this together, now I can really see that. Do you see this gap right here? The good thing is, I mean, one, I can still fix it right now, but the foam board that this is all going on is black. So, I mean, it's not glitter black, 
so we still have that issue but it does help when everything is sort of camouflaged in all right so i fixed that much better <laughs> now you don't see that huge gap so like i said i mean really the purpose of making these things big um is to hide the seams and make it look amazing right i mean because anybody can you can cut up a bazillion pieces and make things as big as me or taller we've definitely done that like with jasmine right she's an inch shorter than i am but um it's one thing to make it big and it's another to make it big and look gorgeous and amazing so that's what we're here to do otherwise anyone else can do it the other way <laughs> So these two, okay, so now that she's all taped together, right, I'll flip it over so you can see, right now you can still see it right here, but once it's glued down and there's a piece over it, you can see how it really blends in, right? This piece right here is really hard to see for, I think, it's where her neck is. So look at that, there's a line running right here and you can't really, you can't see it. Um, and this has a bright light on it. So I feel like if you can't see it here, you definitely can't see it in person. I mean, when it's propped up, you know, um, cause we're scrutinizing it right now. There's a seam running right here that you can't really see until you get over here. But look at this right here. Her hair is gonna be covering it, but it really helps when, um, the reason why I chose black glitter cardstock is her um, her pants is black and so it, it was a big portion her legs cover it right here but I just didn't want I just didn't want it so all right let's flip it over though and let's tape the edges let's look at where all the edges are and what I mean by the edges is like up here so you just want to tape it down a little bit more so that there's no room for movement the whole thing does not need to be taped down but just right now I want to make sure that the edges are because again there's nothing covering the edges we know that because it has a black border so you just want to tape it down so it, there's just no movement so it doesn't catch any light okay I think I'm good let's flip her over and I'm going to bring over all the colored pieces and we're going to put it down to make sure that we like the spacing of everything. I'll be right there. Okay. The other thing that I just started to get into is, um, and when we get there, I'll show you, but I'll talk about it right now. Uh, she, <clears throat> excuse me she has in her dress I'll show you right now in her dress there's all these um, little cutouts right so there are black pieces that go with it <clears throat> oh my gosh excuse me I want to make this a little bit more 3d ish so we're gonna use um, foam tape because we have the little the little dots that go the little cutouts I want to make it stand up a little bit you won't notice it so much but I feel like with these projects every little thing uh, however small it is together adds into like a big wow statement right like no seams wow added together with a little 3d piece here it just looks so much more than what you can get at party city for example okay so we're I'm gonna show you how to do that and I'm going to be incorporating that more in my projects. So hopefully you like it because <laughs> it's here to stay. <laughs> um, all right. So let's. And I highly recommend putting this together the way that we're doing it right now. Every single time that I've done one of these pieces. And I'm trying to talk while I'm putting this together, which is never good. Um, I. I there's always movement changes, like little pieces, and it makes a difference because when I haven't done it this way, 
there's going to be a portion where it's like a little bit too much black is showing and it's not even and um it bothers me i mean i notice it i don't know if everyone else would notice it but if i'm going to do a video <laughs> it should be as perfect as can be i think right <laughs> all right so let's put all this together And she is so cute, but I am kind of surprised as to who's having all these pebbles parties. Um, my daughter has yet to have seen a Flintstone episode. So let's see the eyes go this way. I know I do like her though, because she's just so, um, all these characters are really cute. So you see it's starting to come together and it's starting to look really, really good. And it's a simple one, so if you do like the Flintstones, this is a great starter one. Okay, this little piece. And I'm just gonna give myself an excuse that it's because I'm doing it sideways that it's a little bit harder for me. <laughs> This way? It is this way. That looks kind of weird to me. Maybe it's. Um, I actually can't. No, it's this way. It just doesn't really fit that well. Alright. Um, her little mouth. how does she look yep that's definitely her um these little dots we'll do later let's just make sure that we like where everything is it's hard for me to see from this angle it looks good right okay so let's start taping gluing down some of these pieces so the easy part I think for me um, to do this is let's do her hair because her hair we can lift up a little bit and glue down and we can start to you know put all this together the other thing is you know you got to be careful with your glue your glue may drip and then you have to recut that whole piece right which is painful <laughs> so um, what you can do is you don't have to go all the way to the edge as long as your piece is really um you know like 90 percent stable and glued down it's not going anywhere right the tips like sometimes with the hair tips right here i will use um like the glue dots or something because that will hold it together i'm not expecting that glue dot to keep the whole thing together but it can keep that little piece in place so just don't worry about that i'm gonna get a few more glue sticks because i feel like we're gonna need it and let's get started so okay i'm going to glue down the hair first so i'm you know keeping it in place look at that orange it's so beautiful um i'm going to keep it in place and lift up so that there's no movement changes in my piece So while we're doing this, because that's basically the tip, um, let's talk about the new changes to Cricut. So if you've noticed, if you haven't updated it, um, you should because now Offset is available and, so, and it's really easy to use. I did already post that tutorial. Um, oh, I see, hold on. 
The other thing that is included in that update is that there are now collections. Collections are basically folders. So you can organize your, your projects now, which is great. Um, the only drawback is if you don't have Cricut access, then where the paid subscription, then you are limited to just being able to create five collections, so five folders. Whereas if you have access, which I do, um, you can have unlimited collections. So I don't think anyone got into an uproar over that like they did with the uploads. <laughs> so the uploads earlier this month, they had announced that when they roll this out, which they did not give us a date at the time, um, if you did not have access, you were limited to 20 uploads per month. And people were really, really, really upset. So they called it back and they said, anybody who has an account, who has a machine registered, will be grandfathered in and you will have unlimited regardless of access or not. Uh, but going forward, whatever that effective date is, which is sometime in 2022, new users, not, so I'm, I'm a current user, right? In 2022, if I go buy a new machine, I'm still grandfathered in because I already had an account and I already had a machine registered to me. But if you are brand, brand, brand new to Cricut in 2022 and you go buy a machine and you register it, if you don't get access, you are limited to 20 uploads a month. So that is the deal. <laughs> okay, so the her hair is down. I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue down the top of it. almost got my hand <laughs> okay so that's down let's do her dress her dress the same thing I'm gonna lift it up a little bit and get this corner down lift this side up I'm gonna avoid the skin for now because that we're gonna use beacon three in one. Okay, I'm gonna do the hair up here, the bone. This I'm just gonna lift up. And since we still have time, let's talk about the mug press. <laughs> so if you watched my video, I did a mug press um, design tutorial. And then today I just released, actually it's about to be released, my mug press, my official mug press review, um, which I have, so I have a heat press, like a legit, you know, um, the one that you push down uh, my husband got it for me, so I, you know, I didn't really look at it at the time, but I use it. I love it. I love it for heating all clothing items because the pressure that comes down, I know my HTV is not lifting. Um, but I always thought it was a five in one heat press. I looked it up on my Amazon account the other day when I was doing the review and it's actually an eight in one, okay? And that's the sad thing is because I didn't even know that there were the other three attachments that I could use, but does it matter? I didn't use any of the attachments. The, I mean, it was a one in one heat press. So, um, so that's the thing. So I got the mug press and the thing has one button. It is so easy to use. Um, so I made my first two mugs with the mug press, with the Cricut mug press. It is not from a price standpoint, from um, 
if I don't take into consideration what kind of crafter I am, what kind of person I am with new technology, then of course the heat press is going to be your best buy. For not that much more, you get to do eight different types of um, you know, heat pressing. <laughs> Mugs, hats, like I said, I only know three. I don't even know the other five, but th you know, that's what's available, right? And you're gonna get quality pressing. Um, not that you won't get the quality pressing with the mug press, but for $200, that's all it can do. But this is what the $200 pays for. It pays for the ease of that machine. It has one button. It is so easy, you turn it on. When all five buttons turn green, that's when you know you can put your mug in, and then you put it in and you press down the lever, and then it beeps when it's done. It is. I'm so scared to use my attachments because I don't even know, well, it came with all these pieces. The instructions weren't that good to begin with because there were actually, I'm not sure I understand. Huh. my watch turned on. Um, there actually weren't really any instructions. <laughs> so I don't know if I needed to go back and you know, the instructions are on the Amazon description section, but it just looks scary. I mean, the thing heats up and it gets really, really hot. It's just like a big hunking machine. And so I'm worried that I'm not putting on the attachments properly. I've never even tried, but it, just looking at all the different pieces, it had me, you know, it had me freaked out enough that I haven't done it. So, you know, if you're not gonna use it at all, then it's a complete waste, right? Which is kind of, what it's been like for me. Um, I mean, I have used the heat press a lot, so that hasn't been a waste, but definitely if I had to, you know, if I paid extra for all those attachments, that that extra money was a waste because I haven't used it. But comparing just uh, like the Easy Press 2 against the heat press, that I feel like is not a good buy because um, it doesn't give it enough pressure. Okay, so I think everything is down except for the skin. So let's finally do the skin. I'm gonna open up this glue. I love this glue because I'm sort of um, messy when it comes to glue. So anytime that I use white glue, um, I get it on my fingers, then it kind of transfers onto other, either other pieces, which is horrible, right? You don't want that. Um, or then I get it onto my clothes because I wipe my hands on my clothes. <laughs> so this, the way it dries, it's so fast that uh, you don't get it on any of your other pieces. So I, I love that. Um, I honestly don't know how much it costs though. I did get it at Michael's, so I did have some sort of coupon, but okay. So I took off all the pieces. So same thing with the with the face. Well, let's do the neck first. And you see, you can't even see it over. It's probably drying right now, and in another second, it's dried. The, I love this glue. Okay, so now what am I gonna do? Let's glue down the ears. So I'm gonna flip this up. I'm gonna let this <clears throat> ear dry so that when I lift up these pieces, it's I know it's gonna be stable. And let's do the fingers here. And the nice thing is when you're using <clears throat> thicker paper, so this, um, actually this is kinda hard to do right now. This paper is basil, so it's, you know, it's firm, it's not flimsy, so you can bend it a little bit and you're not gonna see the crease. 
Um, and with these characters, I feel like, um, you know, you're making an effort to do this and usually it's for a party. So I would try to use, you know, as good paper as you can because it's just, you know, it's not that much more for this project to do that. And it's just going to photograph so much better and it's just gonna look really, really good. All right, so I'm just making my way through. I'm gluing down what I can just to get it glued down and then I'm gonna come back and glue it some more. But I want everything to stay in place. I don't wanna lose my placement. Okay, so that's down. I think, oh no, her belly. So now that everything is in place, I'm gonna let it dry just for another second. Let's look at these pieces. So this is foam tape from the Dollar Tree. I have bought some from Amazon. I haven't done the price comparison or a quality comparison, but I started using this and I like it. So there you have it again, right? I'm all about ease sometimes, as long as it's not breaking the bank. Um, Although that's not even a true statement because the mud press was kind of expensive. <laughs> but, all right, so these pieces, what I want to do is I want to give it the depth, the, you know, the dimension that I was talking about, right? So let's cut off. I like to stack this double. So, right, so um, at double, I think it gets to about 0.2 inches. So it just gives it, you know, that height that I'm looking for. So um, you just cut another piece and place it right on top. Now because I'm a little bit paranoid about the um, about it sticking, I use the adhesive that's on the actual double-sided tape, right? The foam tape, the foam squares, uh, the foam rolls, and I'm also going to hit it with glue with from my glue gun. So that's how I'm gonna do that. All right, so now let's see, this is all down? Yeah, this is all down. So this piece goes here. I'm gonna put glue all around it so it's got, so it's, it's gonna stay down with glue and the tape. This thing is not going anywhere. And I just, I know you can't see it right now. I'm gonna lift it up in a little bit, but it just gives it an extra piece to it. It's popping out. It looks really, really good. Um, so I think I'm gonna, you know, again, I'm gonna try to start doing that. Um, when you're layering like this though, for instance, next time I'm gonna try it um, on a, like maybe the dress, the shirt. What I would recommend is that you still have like if I were to do this shirt here, this is how I would do it. <laughs> I would do maybe just a green regular cardstock that matches this, but not glitter. So that would be my bottom layer. And then on this layer, I would add the double-sided tape to give it that extra you know, depth um, portion of it. That way it doesn't look weird that it's off. You can see the green behind, so you kind of know. Um, I think in theory, in my head, that's what sounds good. So I'm gonna try it out next time and we shall see. So, but if you experiment before me, comment and let me know because we can try out all the different ways. So, all right. And we're almost done with this piece, which leaves just the foam board. So this, again, it's one of the easier pieces, I think. Easier characters. Now, someone asked me recently if, because before I was using Inkscape to do the offset, if I would still use Inkscape. So, I stopped using Inkscape because I bought the Silhouette software. So I was doing a lot of my offsets in, sil in the Silhouette software. I was still filming with Silhouette, I mean with 
Inkscape because Inkscape is free. And so I knew not all my users were going to have both a Cricut and Pave because the Silhouette software is free, but it's sort of, I mean, this is where Cricut probably got their idea from. Um, it's free with limited um, functionality. So you couldn't, ah, I got my finger. You, you know, you can create things and create the offset, but if you don't have the business um, edition, which you pay for, you couldn't export it anywhere. So yeah, you can create the offset, but now you gotta use your silhouette machine. So if you didn't have that, then you were kind of screwed. But if you had the business edition, which, although, you know, I don't blame them, it's $100. You could get it cheaper on some of the sites. I think you can get as low as $70. Um, but you, it's a one-time fee, and then you're done. Whereas Cricut, you know, with access, you're sort of, it's it's like, um, what was that music company? Not, oh, was it like, oh yeah, I guess it's like Spotify, right? You don't own any of that music. It's on rent while you're paying membership. When you're paying the membership, you have access to everything. As soon as you stop paying, you don't have, if you created a project with one of their images, you now can't go back and create that project without paying for that image. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, so I I don't think I will be using Inkscape that much anymore because now definitely I would either just use Cricut or um, go back to my Silhouette software. That was a, a very lengthy answer and I lost my way there. <laughs> Um, okay, we're down to our last dot. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to go back and glue everything down because everything is technically glued down enough. I'm going to, um, I don't want to waste your time on that, but I will show you what she looks like. Look how big she is and how cute, right? I mean, and she photo, like I said, all these characters with the cardstock that we're using and just they're, they're cute. Um, they photograph really, really well. Okay, I'm gonna go get my foam board. Oh, I didn't put down this piece. This piece came up. So this is for her dress it, to show that it is 3D. All right, let me glue that down. Okay, I'm gonna get the foam board and we're gonna do the foam board piece. So this foam board, it's 20 by 30, so it's perfect for our 30 inch characters. Um, and you're going to see, oh, I didn't put my glue back on, okay, here it is. Your characters do not need to be 100% backed with this foam board. Um, so you can see her hair sticks up a little bit. Even if her hair was this much or this much, it will stay propped up because the majority of her is has the stiff backing. So don't worry about it. I mean, you could always go a little bit more diagonal, but you're fine on this one. I wanna make sure what's important to me is wherever your character is sitting on the table or on the ground, we wanna make sure that that has support. So the feet right here, the bottom, you want to make sure that that gets um, a really good portion of the foam. All right, how we're going to do this, you need to get, the easiest thing is to have a white pencil so that you can trace around this character. When you're tracing around the character, we are actually going to cut inside this line. And the reason is because we don't need to cut it on the line. It doesn't need to be completely covered by the foam board, right? It's gonna give it support by being um, covered 90%, probably even less. But anyway, at 90%, we're good. And so we can cut inside the, the, inside the, the mark. That way you don't see the foam board at all. And I've noticed the way I use my Cricut knife, um, 
that I cut at an angle. And so if I don't cut inside this line at the angle that I'm that I cut it with, it actually shows the foam board. So um, so that's another reason. Ooh. Did I not glue down this hand? I didn't put enough glue. Okay. Alright, now this piece is not going anywhere. Um, so as I was saying, <laughs> we're going to cut inside the lines. And a lot of times these characters are, they're in the background, so they're not getting manhandled. So it's you're gonna be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna lift this up, I'm gonna put it aside. So can you see it? Okay, yeah, you can see it. So I'm gonna take this, I love this blade, this knife. Um, you want to make sure that when you're doing this, it's easiest when you do it in one stroke. I don't mean the whole thing in one stroke, but each line that you cut, if you cut it in one stroke, it's much easier, it's cleaner. So I'm gonna do this one right here. So I'm gonna go inside the line. And it's smooth, it's easy, and you just saw me do it, right? <laughs> so let's just turn it over and keep going around. And sometimes it's easier just to get some of these pieces out of the way. Like, I'm gonna do this right here. So someone recommended to me before, a long time ago, um, it was like a foam cutting tool. So you plug it in, it heats up, and I found that this was a lot easier for me. So if anyone has any other things, I am totally willing to try things out. You just gotta let me know. And unless it's super, super, super expensive, I won't get it, but... Um, in the name of research and I love my tools so if you see something that you think might work I'm totally open to getting it just let me know okay all right so let's see um where do I want to go let's almost done. At the end, we're just going to um, use the hot glue gun 
and glue the image, the character, to this foam board. And then with that, you'll be able to prop it up against the wall, a table, um, and you know, even to hang it up, right? It's a lot easier to hang it up when it's um, sturdier. We're getting there, so you see, just a few more pieces. Okay, so the top portion is done. I cut that at an angle and I knew that was gonna show. So <laughs> I just went back and chopped it off. So there, her foot's not gonna have that much support up here. It's okay up here, because down here is where it's gonna be resting on the table or floor, so. And this is not coming out for some reason. Got that, she is almost there. Just a little bit more. Oh my gosh, and I didn't finish outlining her. So let's hope that works. All these pieces I'm gonna put aside. I'm gonna bring her back. So here she is. And I'm gonna need to cut a little bit more right here, right? A little bit more on this foot. And let's see how well she sits up here. Up here is fine. So actually, I think she's pretty good. Let me show you what the back looks like. So you can see, you know, we're inside the edges. So from here, all you need to do is fix the areas that you need to cut just a little bit more, right? Um, let me fix that again. So right here, I need to cut this part off. Okay, so that's good now. Let's see, I'm gonna do a little bit. A little bit on this foot. Okay. And a little 
put it right here. And I think that's it. Let's make sure. Okay. So now that she's down, what you wanna do is, I always glue at the bottom first. So I'm gonna lift this up and glue her down. Then I'm gonna flip her over and glue from the top down. Because that way you ensure that every piece gets glue and it's stuck on here. Okay, I think I'm good. So let's do this. Let's do the foot. So now I'm going to flip her around because to make sure that I can get glue everywhere, I can now lift her up and start gluing little by little and letting her roll down so that I can get glue everywhere. That's the only way that this is going to work. <laughs> so let's do this. I hate it when the glue doesn't, the glue stick doesn't go down. Okay, so I've got that side. Okay, so she's glued down to here right now. Then I'm gonna slowly glue upwards. I know you can't really see because I don't want to bend this too much to actually cause a crease, but I think you get what I'm doing, right? So let's do this. And then the only thing left is the top portion right here. So let me put this away before I cut myself. <laughs> All right. And this part, I'm gonna heat it. I'm gonna hopefully not run out of glue where I need another glue stick. All right. So she's on the ground, propped up against me. She looks amazing. Let me know what you think. So remember on this one, I still need to go back and glue down the rest of like, for instance, her face, right? Most of it's glued down by the ear. So I'm gonna clean that up. You don't need to see that, you get that idea. Let me know what you think. If you like this idea, I love the 3D-ish feel. And uh, I don't know, let me know what kind of characters you want to see. If you have a special project, I'm all ears. I will see you guys next time. Thank you.